was a really fun video for me because I get to share with you some of my favorite art supplies. Hi, my name is Yumi. Welcome to my channel. I'm the artist behind Yumi in Color. I'm excited to share this video with you all today because it is a question I get quite often whenever I'm sharing my art, whether that be through Instagram or TikTok. I thought it would be great to condense all those materials in one video to share with you all. These are art supplies that I've used within the past year or even longer. And so I've worked with these products like almost every day. Just in case in the future, if you ever are wondering what materials I'm using, you can reference back to this video. So hopefully this will bring you some inspiration and that it will be helpful for you if you're looking for some new materials or if you're just curious of what kind of art supplies I enjoy using. We're gonna start off with probably the number one question that I get when regards to my art supply materials and that is what sketchbook do I use? So this one is my mini sketchbook. This is where I love to draw with color pencil and make a lot of my reels and TikToks. is my go-to sketchbook. It's such a cute size. It's great and compact and nice for when I'm looking to experiment with different textures and especially with something like colored pencil which is a much newer medium that I've been trying out this year it has been just so wonderful to use so as you can see here this is not really great for paint I mean I guess you could use it this is gouache that I used on top of it but it was it, it definitely made it all crinkly here so it's not like the best type of paper for that but you could use it just for sometimes get a little wrinkly if you use too much water which i find that when i use more mixed media pages that doesn't happen so i'm thinking this one i don't remember if it was like mixed media or not but it's perfect for pen and pencil which is what i mainly use it for so this is my mini sketchbook and the name you know i can't really say the name i feel like i might butcher it so i'm just gonna have the name uh in the subtitles here below and just in case you want to find it, but this is a sketchbook I actually got in an art store when I was in Seoul. What's funny about this sketchbook as well is the fact that I had bought this because it was quite cheap when I was at this art store in Seoul. And I was like, oh, I don't even think I'll use it that much. Like, I really just was like, this is the back of my mind. Like, I'm not going to use this size all the time. It's just going to be there just in case I want to bring it with me somewhere and sketch or something like that. But it has become a surprise for me because I literally use this every week and it is so much fun to work in here. I've loved using the sketchbook, which is a big surprise for me because I literally did not think I would enjoy working in the sketchbook as much as I do now. So it was great. Highly recommend getting a small size sketchbook for just when you need to draw something really quick or if you want to bring it to places with you and travel with a sketchbook. This is a really good size. Next sketchbooks that I love using, as you can see, I have three of them now. Two of them are finished and one I'm just beginning. These are the two I finished. And then this is the one I am starting. So this sketchbook, all time favorite. We'll probably go to this for as long as they keep making this. And even when they stop making it, I'll keep looking for it until I find it because this is literally the best sketchbook I've ever used. And it's, this is the sketchbook that actually got me into really enjoying sketchbooking because that was something I really struggled with for the past couple years. This sketchbook really helped me to let myself play and to loosen up a bit because this book is a soft cover book. It's a Strathmore mixed media sketchbook. And because it's soft cover, it's very malleable. So I can like bend the pages, bend the bind like this. It's very flexible. And that made me feel more loose with like being like, oh, I can just kind of bend these pages and draw whatever I want and whatnot. And so this sketchbook was really great for that. As you can see here, this is an all watercolor page. This was all done in watercolor and it holds the watercolor super well, does not wrinkle as you can see here. And it's just really good at holding the pigment and it makes the colors super vibrant. Like, I don't know what it is about this paper, but it's very magical and I love it. Like this is all gouache as well. And it, as you can see, it does not wrinkle and it holds the paint so well. 
This was a really great travel size sketchbook as well because I brought this one. This one's my Korea sketchbook. I brought this with me all over Korea. Wherever I was traveling, I would bring this and paint, whether I was at a coffee shop or in my hotel. You can see the full video in my sketchbook tour and I'll link it up. No, I'll link it down below if you would like to see that. But I could just go on and on about the sketchbook. It's just so great. Like, and also the flipping sounds the paper texture is nice and thick so it just can hold so much different types of materials like this is all watercolor and color pencil and this was like a mixture of color pencil watercolor and gouache and it just holds it so well so i highly recommend the sketchbook very good quality we'll probably continue to use it for as long as i can and so these are yeah, just some of the pages that I use, but it just, I think the paper quality too just makes the colors like even more vibrant. Like, I don't know, I've tried some other sketchbooks and they don't come out as vibrant as they do here in the Strathmore Mixed Media. Like, look at that. Really, really love this sketchbook. And here is my newest one. Won't show all of it, but this is a page I shared recently and the colors are just so vibrant. And this was all used with some of my favorite watercolors that I'll be sharing with you in just a little bit. But yeah, just really big fan, really big fan of the sketchbook. Next, we have my go-to color pencils, which are these Prismacolor Premier Color Pencils, soft core, 36 count. I have more than 36 color pencils because I, buy, I bought them individually at different art shops I've been to recently and... So I have more than 36 in here, but this originally, this set originally came with 36 pencils. And I got this also when I was in Korea, it was on sale. I've used Prismacolor before and I love the quality of their pencils. It's one of my favorite go-to color pencils. This is what's been inspiring me a lot recently with trying out something new and doing a different medium besides painting and something i love about color pencils is the fact that it's so accessible and immediate like i can if i'm trying to come up with an idea of something and i have some colors in mind i can go to these color pencils for an immediate like idea or sketch of something that i really wanted to visualize versus like when i'm painting i have to wait for it to dry and it's like a whole process which i do also love as well for different reasons i'll share with you some of my favorite colors this rouge permanent permanent red i read the french version i think is that french i don't know uh, but this is my one of my favorite reds to work with it is very vibrant very nice to work with i'll do some swatches here we'll use my strathmore mixed media sketchbook for that so I'll just use this page over here and that's what it looks like and then another one that I love using as well is this hot pink rose. I keep reading the one on the right because that's the one I just keep gravitating towards for some reason. But it's called Neon Pink. And I got this one at Jerry's Artorama when I was visiting some friends in Tennessee, actually. So this one is a really beautiful color. It's literally neon pink. And I like using it as an accent for different paintings or drawings that I like to do but that is the color super bright very pigmented another color I really enjoy using is this beautiful cobalt blue and this didn't come with the set these two didn't come with the set this these two I had bought separately here is the swatch that's what it looks like it's a really nice bright blue Another color I like is I love my greens, so I got a couple different ones. Different ones. I didn't get this in the set as well. I also bought these individually. This one is called Sap Green Light, and then this one is called Pale Sage, and they're both really lovely colors. I'll show you over here. This is Pale Sage, and then this is Sap Green. It's an orange color. I've been really into the color orange this year. Something about it really speaks to me. I'm not sure why yet, but I love it. It's just a pure orange color. 
And this one, I believe, came with the set. Bright, vibrant, tangerine, clementine, color orange. Very bright. This is a really beautiful true green. It's so, like, bright. Kind of almost like a neon green to me, honestly. Uh, it's even brighter, like, when you see it in person. But that's what it looks like. And then I love using this blue as well. It's called blue slate this one i also bought separately it's a very beautiful pastel blue color you can get these color pencils at your local michaels hobby lobby any art store jerry's artorama uh, blick art anywhere online basically these are very accessible and i will say they are, can be quite pricey so i would look for a sale or two if you want to do that um, which is why I got this set because it was on sale and I absolutely adore working with them highly recommend you can find the link in my bio if you would like to check out these color pencils now we're going to move into sort of more of my random art supplies that I like to use so this is a brush holder that I like to use it's not originally a brush holder it was gifted to me by a friend and it used to have utensils in here because it was for like a portable utensil holder but I was really into it being a brush holder and I used it a couple of times as a brush holder and I loved bringing this around with me so for example I have a brush here I just pop that in put this on top and then roll it and then it's just a nice portable brush holder and I also love that it's cloth because I can just dab the excess as you can see here all the little markings the excess watercolor or just any paint that I'm using onto this and it kind of serves as like another rag like a paint rag or something like that if I'm if I forget the paint rag that I like to use usually so there's that and then next we have my trusty old pencil sharpener to be fair this is not the most uh, high quality pencil sharpener. I definitely have it for nostalgic reasons, but it also can do a good job sometimes. But sometimes it just keeps eating my pencil and I'm like, when when are we going to have this be sharpened? But sometimes it works, sometimes it doesn't. So I would say it's not like the most trusty pencil sharpener, but it's great for traveling and it's very sentimental to me because I got this when I was living in Glasgow. I was studying abroad back in 2017 and it was one of the best few months of my life i got this at a local art shop there it was a rainy day and i was shopping for art supplies with my friend because we were taking a figure drawing class and i really needed a sharpener and so i got this because it reminded me of one of my favorite movies at the time it was called love rosie if you haven't seen the movie this isn't really a spoiler but at the beginning of the movie they have like this little globe that you see in like the opening scene I thought it was so cute and which is why i got this this is my go-to pencil i've been using this for the past two years it's called a drafting pencil and i just got this on amazon it's like super cheap and pretty good quality the red the red color is really great for sketching and making light sketches because i find that graphite can make the paint or colors look really muddy so i like using this red drafting pencil it's really great for those sketches Next, I have this clip. It's a clip I got when I bought this grid uh, decor item thing that I got like, what, four, three, three, four years ago. And it just came with it to like, it's for hanging up art pieces or prints or whatever, but I like to use it now for holding open my sketchbook. So that's where the clip is from, also from Amazon. And then we have my beloved pencil bag. It's a bag that I found when I was at a bookstore in Korea. It was in Seoul. I saw this and I was like, oh my gosh, this is so perfect because I love Pantone and I love this like lemon color yellow. And so I got this one and it's a really good size for holding pencils and pens. It also comes with like a little pouch here as well. So really, really love this pencil, pencil bag. Next, we have my kneaded eraser. This is something I've used since... I started art classes. This is great for erasing things when you're drawing something. This helps to get rid of any like unwanted lines. Works just like an eraser. You erase with a rubber eraser like this, 
little bit of debris comes off because of the rubber. But this, it doesn't come off at all. It just picks up all the extra pencil markings. I'll show you an example of it. We'll just do a little quick a little line there. And then basically all you have to do is tap it like that. Erase it like that. And then it's gone. So definitely a go-to. Really, really great to use for drawing and sketching. Last but not least, we have my paint rag. This was something I use every day whenever I'm painting to get rid of any excess water. It's great for holding any extra paint. This was a rag I got also from Korea. My aunt had some extra one of these lying around and I decided to use one up. I had forgotten to bring a paint rag so she gave me this and it's really great for painting so highly recommend getting a paint rag. Doesn't have to be anything fancy. You can just literally use an old cotton t-shirt or an old towel and that will work perfectly well. Next, we have my brushes. So here, this is also a water cup that I like to use. It's from an old yogurt jar. Really delicious yogurt. Highly recommend. And it also makes a good paint jar. So here are some of my brushes. I'm going to separate them a little bit. So because they're all different brands. These brushes are the love of my life. They are <laughs> the brushes I've always wanted to find and I love them. I love them so much. These are also from Korea, of course, and the brand is the here. These just paint so beautifully. They hold up so well, such high quality. I just love them. Another set of paintbrush, well, here's another set of paintbrushes that I also enjoy using. As you can see, it's not as good quality as the other ones. The brushes have faded quite a bit. I've been using these for about a year now, but these are really good detail brushes. I got these at either Michael's or Hobby Lobby, I don't remember, but they were really cheap and I just needed some like detail brushes to do some gouache painting with, an, oh my gosh, you can see it's like chipping off. So yeah, quality of this one's not super great. I feel like I'm not selling this one very well, but if you need a cheap paintbrush, this is a good option. Next, we have my paint palette. This is a ceramic plate, not necessarily used for painting, but I loved the color of it because it's like a nice, very, very light yellow. And I thought it'd be great as like a paint palette. I got this when I was in Sokcho in Korea last year and it was handmade by a local artist. It's so beautiful. The back of this feels so smooth as well. But I love using this for whenever I paint with gouache or with watercolor. It's a really great paint palette for that. Okay, here is the one of my favorite art materials to use, which is watercolor and gouache paints. These are some of my holy grail items. I've used these for the past year and they are my all-time favorite paints to work with. I've tried many, many different types of watercolors, many different types of gouaches, and these are definitely the foolproof ones that I can vouch for and say these are my go-to, most trusted favorite paints ever. So I'll start with this one. This one's actually a travel kit. A paint palette. I got this from Amazon and I had originally purchased this before I left for Korea because I really wanted a travel size kit so I can put in my own paints and make my own color palettes as well and this is mostly all filled up with actually no not mostly this is all full, filled up with watercolor and they're the Shen Han Art watercolor which I'll talk about in just a second but I just thought this was such a perfect size for mixing colors and adding my own colors as well. I adore this paint palette. It's served me really well. I even use this when I'm at home because it's just such a great palette to use and it's super durable as well and such a compact nice size. I can just fit this in my backpack or my purse and be on the go. So I love this one. Next we have my favorite watercolors ever. I could just talk on and on about these and how much I love them. But these are the Shen Han Art watercolors. This is also made in Korea. And here is the label name right there. I found these watercolors by chance because I was walking around 
the area that my hotel was at in Seoul with my sister happened to come upon a really cute art store just like hidden away tucked away in, around the corner this was in Insadong, which was where we were staying at i loved the little art store that we found there it was so cute and i saw these watercolors and i was really curious about it and i saw the price point and they were about a usd dollar or two dollars each and i was like oh my gosh these are so cheap i need to get some so i got a few and i did a little test swatch afterwards at like a cafe that my sister and I went to and I immediately was like I need to go back and buy like six more because these are so pigmented and vibrant and so beautiful so I ended up getting these and then I got a lot more as well in my collection but these are some of my favorite colors I can actually show you the exact page of when I was testing out these watercolors this was in my Korea sketchbook and these are some of the swatches I did and you, as you can see they are so vibrant and this is where I was like oh my gosh I need to get more of these watercolors because I was obsessed with the colors and how vibrant they are. The next batch of watercolors that I love using in the past year has been these Holbein Artist watercolor. The Holbein brand in general is just such high quality. I believe it's a Japanese brand and it is one of my favorite favorite brands to work with because the product quality is so great like I've been using these for the past year barely made a dent in it and this one is a new one I haven't opened yet but this is like one of my core paints that I love to work with it's called bright rose and it is an extremely vibrant pink almost hot pink color and it mixes really beautifully with like this yellow here it makes it a really nice bright orange this is a this is a green color called leaf green. Reminds me of what the grass looks like at the beginnings of spring. It's such a beautiful color. So I love using these. And just a little bit, I'll do like a couple swatches of these colors just so that you can see. Next, we have my gouache paints. So here I have my large tube of artist gouache in zinc white. I like to get a large tube of white paint or white gouache paint just because I like to use white quite a bit in my work. So I get that one and then here is the Holbein Artist Gouache which is one of my favorite gouache brands it is so pigmented so vibrant and I love working with these as you can see I have put a lot of love into this cypress green color and this is just such a good quality paint the mixability of these gouache paints are so pleasing and it, they just work so well like when I put it down on paper, it's so creamy and vibrant. So I'm gonna share with you some swatches of these colors so you can see what they look like. All right, so we're gonna do some paint swatches. I'm gonna start out with this permanent yellow light watercolor paint. I'm just gonna put a little bit here because I'm only gonna do a little swatch. So I'm gonna start with the lightest color first. Oh my gosh, that was beautiful. I just saw two butterflies dancing together outside my window. That was so wonderful. <laughs> I love that. Um, okay, so we're gonna grab some of this yellow and just do a little swatch here. That's what it looks like. And then next, we're going to do this leaf green color. Actually, scratch that. We're going to do the bright rose luminous color. And I just poured some fresh paint here. So we're going to use that. As you can see, it is a beautiful vibrant, almost hot pink, but that is what it looks like. This is the Bright Rose Luminous. Next we have, I'm going to go in with the leaf green color. So as you can see, I like to pour in my own paints into my paint palette. And then I go in from there. Ooh, 
I love this spring green color. It's so pleasing. But that is what that looks like. All right, next I'm going to go in with my other favorites, the Shen Han Art watercolor. I'm not going to do all of them. I'm just going to do probably the lavender and the green pale one just because I already have them in my travel kit. So we'll start off with the green pale. We'll swatch that over here. It's like a really beautiful mint green color. It really reminds me of like mint chocolate chip ice cream or something. But that is green pale. And the next I'm gonna go in with the lavender color. Here's the lavender. As you can see, it's like a nice light periwinkle blue color. So that is the lavender color. And then, you know, we'll just go in with the cobalt blue since I already have it here, but I'm just gonna do this tiny, tiny right there, just cause I'm gonna swatch it. That's, this is the cobalt blue. Ooh, that is a very pleasing blue, true cobalt. And the colors will look more vibrant when you use less water or as you continue to layer on top, which is like watercolor. If you do a light wash, it's going to be a lighter color. If you do a thicker wash, then it's going to be a more vibrant opaque color. But those are the Shin Han Art watercolors. All right, so we have made it to the end of the video. Thank you all so much for watching. It was a journey. I took a while. I had to take a while to make this video for sure, but I'm really happy I finally did and that it's all in one condensed video. So if you ever have any questions about what materials I like to use, you can reference back to this one. Or if you're curious and trying out new materials, this would be potentially a good video for you to look at. But I'm so happy I finally made it and I'm glad that you're here. Thank you for being here and for supporting me. If you would like to continue to support this channel, feel free to like and subscribe. Leave a comment down below of some new art materials that you want to try or some art materials that you've been loving and you would love to recommend to people. I'll see you in the next one. Bye!